So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what made me change my mind about Mr. Beast. And it was this video that made the hu a huge impact on me, a massive impact. And before this video, I thought Mr. Beast was squeaky clean. I thought he was the, the Jesus of YouTube. But now, um, I, my mind has completely changed. And there were some times when I was watching Mr. Beast videos and I was like, there seems like there's some context not in there. So something's been taken out or something's been taken out, something's been changed or manipulated or something is off. And I just couldn't put my finger on it. I was like, something is off. I'm enjoying the video. Yeah, 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 all the entertainment stuff. You know, it feels great to watch them. Yeah, I'm with the subscribers and I'm with the contestants. But then, the back of my head, I'm thinking, something seems too good to be true and there seems that something is off. Like the Matrix system is just glitching. Like, you know, the YouTube Matrix algorithm is just going off. And... Now this video exposes it all, and now it all completely makes sense. And this is the reason that mainly made me unsubscribe from Mr. Beast forever. Here it is. Well, of course. If you could post something and everyone in the world would watch it, you'd be the most powerful man on Earth. We're not promoting gambling. I think people are going to see this name. Oh, Very the guy smart who with just the money. throws away millions of dollars on YouTube videos is a gambler. Who would have thought? lottery for it's money. To the point where he's gambling with people's lives. You don't have to pay anything to enter the gym. This is right. legal. I don't get it. It's a scam. Hundreds of forged or fake signatures. Honey schemes are great up until they just go bust. Hi, I wanted to provide some context to this video. I'm a former Mr. Beast employee, and today I am alleging that the company uh, rigged videos and uh, did illegal lotteries and sold fake signatures. I, I would consider that fraud, okay? Thank you. Enjoy the video. So this is part one into my investigation into Mr. Beast. Uh, I recorded this before the Chris stuff came out. I was also going to come out about the Chris stuff, probably in part two or three. Because um, I see a lot of people saying, like, oh, if you knew, why didn't you come forward? Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, I was going to come forward. And also, like... Going to the authorities isn't going to work because what are you going to say? Like, you heard rumors that this person is this way or that, you know, there's obviously evidence of like the shad based stuff. Like, that's been out for a while. People have internally known at the company that like Chris is kind of a, a potential miners attracted person and, and the company protects her and or they were protecting her and they protected her as long as they could. Jimmy knew, everyone knew. So, you know, which I think that's more of a red flag than anything I'm going to reveal in this video. But, um, you know, those messages happen in like, Mr. Beast discords and yeah, I don't know. It's a mess when like Mr. Beast contestants are being exposed to like minor attracted persons and the company's protecting them. You know, there's a big emphasis at the company of like how to manipulate children, like understanding their psychology and everything and like seeing that that's sort of used in weird ways. And you know, there's been like parasocial relationships and you know, encouraging like almost children simping for these people. And, you know, maybe that's as nefarious as it gets, or maybe it goes deeper. Anyway, here's an old podcast clip of Jimmy explaining that he knows that his audience is young. Oh, which is an old clip. You could say like his audience grew up. I would say he's gained most of his audience since then and his content's only gotten younger. Uh, also, this clip really just shows that like, he understands the YouTube analytics are bullshit because he can try to use that as a defense, but he knows. Uh, so here's that clip, and then I'll get into the video. The average demographic is what, 13 through 17? Is that the biggest spike in your analytics? Well, I mean, mine's horseshit. It says like 18 to 24, but I know all my fucking viewers are little kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I feel like it's a lot like that because, you know, little kids lie about their age or they're on their, you know, like. But well, yeah, and then I have but, like a fucking massive account. one for like the 40 year old range because all the fucking idiots are on their parents' account. Now, Mr. Beast intentionally manipulates these children's vulnerable minds for profit using uh, three simple steps, which closely align with the three major types of behavioral learning. Step one is getting the viewer to associate the brand with trust and authority. Mr. Beast videos are real, and he's a great guy that gives away big rewards to his loyal followers. I will show you irrefutable evidence in a minute that his videos are in fact fake. Step two is showing the viewers that when people interact with Mr. Beast in a way that benefits Mr. Beast, when they do what he tells them to do, they win big rewards. Is he subscribed? You are subscribed. Here's some money. Have a good day. <laughs> some of them feel like I just walk around with a thousand dollars. It's like, oh, thanks for watching my videos. Hit that subscribe button because you might bump into me in real life and it might make you a lot of money. When people are devout followers of Mr. Beast, they get rewarded. And step three is finally calling on the viewer to act in some way that benefits the brand. Promising big rewards in return. 
Now it's your turn to do what Mr. Beast tells you and you will win big rewards. But you actually won't unless you're famous or friends or family of a Mr. Beast employee. So young impressionable viewers are made to believe that Mr. Beast is a trusted authority who can give them big rewards. These young viewers are explicitly shown that dedicated followers or random subscribers like themselves are winning big rewards when they do what Mr. Beast tells them. These young viewers are explicitly told repeatedly that if they subscribe, if they buy products or act in some way that benefits the brand, they will win big rewards. Trust Mr. Beast, watch him help others, contribute to his cause, and one day he'll help you too. That's the formula. Subscribe for a Lamborghini and you to make me happy. You could be in one of these subscribe videos. Right subscribe right now. And you might get pictures. Next video. Next video. Subscribe. 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 For faking videos before, and the common response is, why does it matter if the videos are fake? They're just meant to be entertainment. A large part of Mr. B's brand is the fact that he doesn't fake videos. I remember when I first started seeing your videos, I was like, this shit's gotta be fake. Oh yeah, it's a huge problem for us now. I actually have to dial back my content sometimes just so people think it's real. Also, if if what we had to film was scripted, you know, because what we do is not scripted, so you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control, blah, blah. If what we did was scripted, Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, this shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, sure, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, these buildings are CGI, but it's not your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker. It's just a guy. This whole room is fake. This contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Beast. Adam got through this fake door twice. This line is scripted. This action is scripted. Uh, in fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. You did it! Yeah! What we did was scripted. Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Let's talk about Mac for a second. We will die. Do you understand that? <laughs> I found public records showing that Mac moved from California to Greenville, North Carolina, where Jimmy is located, back in August 2023, two months before he appeared as a contestant. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, this is around the time when Mac started working full-time on the editing team at Mr. Beast. Also, he didn't just move into any old house, he moved into a million dollar mansion. Now, I'm not gonna dox him, only some asshole would do something like that. After doxing and bullying the pilot some more, like a f***ing douchebag, turns to Eric and says, how do I fly this thing? <laughs> and Eric just starts pushing buttons. But I did find pictures of this mansion online, so I fed them into ChatGPT and asked it to create similar images. And this is what it came up with. And it's honestly not that far off. His 6,000 square foot million dollar mansion comes with a movie theater and seven bathrooms. What are you gonna spend the $800,000 on? I mean, my life's changed now. Yeah, I'm sure that $800,000 is really gonna change your life. Max, this is a nice car. Tell me, where are we right now? Uh, we're in the place that uh, we drove to a few months ago. Uh, Mac, let's let's cut the shit here. What have you been doing for like the last year? A lot of family stuff. What kind of family stuff? Just mm -hmm. like uh, you know, playing catch with my dad. You know, for a year. What do you? How do you make money? <laughs> how are you uh, like surviving? Basically, like my main strategy is I, I go to like a like grocery store type places. Grocery store type places. <laughs> and I basically, and I basically what I'll do when I get there. I usually get like like a, an amount of food that takes like a week or so. Right? With with what money? The money that I made. How did you make it? Huh? Where, yeah, well, listen, you're getting too caught up in the details. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. <laughs> we will die. Do you understand that? During this time lapse on the fourth day of seven days stranded at sea, you can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But after a hard cut, magically five people are awake, and two of the boys have bright yellow raincoats that they didn't have when it rained on day two. And after standing the whole night completely soaked, you didn't spend the night soaked, Jimmy. You slept on the production yacht. It's ironic because this is one of the videos where they claim that they don't fake things. But no, we have to be the real channel that doesn't fake things. Uh, in this video, this wink was added in post. In fact, 58 was actually on the far opposite side of the room from 42, and he just didn't hear him. This whole revenge storyline was added in post. Multiple shots show how timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. They also manipulated contestants' audio in post. We got 50 minutes. In general, if anything happens last second, it's fake. Or if you can hear someone's voice but can't see their mouth, the audio could easily be added in post. I literally think I'm gonna kill you. And yes, this lie detector video was also fake. Have you ever faked a video? 
No. Take that line. Uh, it's still real to me, damn it! Okay, so Mr. Beast fabricates some contestant dialogue and timers and movements and storylines and uses a bunch of shitty CGI, but who really cares? I mean, the videos are just for entertainment only, right? I mean, it's not like he's ever rigged the results of a challenge. That would be impossible because he films with hundreds of random subscribers, right? Wrong. Let's look at this video. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants are not random subscribers. So many people had jobs. Oh, that contestant had to get out for her job? I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I actually recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local to Mr. Beast and oftentimes friends and family of Mr. Beast employees or just the employees themselves. And when they do pull someone from outside of North Carolina, it's usually somebody who's in the industry, who's camera trained, who has built a following. Hey, anyone I'm friends with watching that wants 10 grand? They are never random subscribers. If you subscribe, you will not win a million dollars. And what's even worse is that the results of this video were completely scripted. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, it would have been a PR problem if the boys had won by a lot. And because so many of the female contestants were Mr. Beast employees who got out immediately, production stepped in to actually make the results of the challenge closer. Uh, you can actually see some of this happen on camera, like when Jimmy pays one of the boys $10,000 to leave, which is twice as much as the actual prize money. Uh, but doesn't make the same offer to the girls. The boys were blowing you out of the water. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. Now if you don't win, that was all for nothing. At another point, he gives the girls a camera drone so they would have been able to see how many boys were left. It doesn't work out, but seeing how much they're willing to help them on camera, I'm willing to believe that they did, in fact, help them off camera. You know, apparently at the end, they were only monitoring the boys to see if they stepped on the red line and not the girls so that the girls would win the challenge. And to be clear, obviously the girls had an unfair start with having so many Mr. Beast employees get out immediately. You know, I think they all did deserve $5,000 for that, but also the boys should deserve a fair chance at winning, I think. I think that's the expectation when you run a game show. But hey, that was a while ago, so I'm just glad they're not doing another rigged boys versus girls video. <laughs> So knowing that Mr. Beast likes the results to be close and that offstage producers can sort of influence how a challenge progresses, I wanna show one more example. This is a real-time video, meaning that time elapses the same in the video as it does in real life. Now immediately the intro is sped up and the timer is clearly added in post and he clearly touches the laser here, but whatever, let's assume that it's all real-time. When he reaches the bottom floor, he has to turn these water valves. Now you can tell that these valves aren't actually connected to anything because the water flows out in an instant and it happens when he's not even touching the valve. The contestant also goes back to the first valve unaware that anything had happened and he's still able to spin it. So the valve seems to spin freely and isn't actually connected to the flow of water. So you could assume that producers might be off camera with remote switches to trigger the flow of water. And assuming they've tested this, the producers might know how long it takes for the water to clear out of the room, so they can sort of decide on the fly how many turns of the valve it takes or just when to trigger the water in general to make the results close. And in this video, spoiler alert, the contestant wins the money, so rigging the challenge could be seen as a good thing, but there are many examples of contestants losing. And in traditional media, this kind of rigging is actually completely illegal. We always have the same person tie mm -hmm. all the knots so that we know they've tied them at the exact same tension. I mean, we get down to inches. And then we have a standards and practices person. And if you don't know what that is, on any kind of a game show where there is a prize, you have to have somebody that ensures that it's fair. They are out there essentially to make sure that we don't do something that would favor one player or one tribe. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. In my mind, I'm thinking it's a fair game. Mm -hmm. But it's not. If they were having problems finding people, they can see kind of what area you're in. Uh, mm. And they came to my area many times. And I was in the smallest cupboard. <laughs> they had like big ones, medium ones, and small ones. I contorted this little four foot ten body into the smallest space. And I was in there for hours. <laughs> and they didn't even open the door because they were like, a person can't even fit in there. So they went in oh there and they God. opened all the cabinets. And my heart was like, oh, they're going to find me. They're going to find me. <laughs> And then I could hear them saying, like, she's not here. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, she's not here. <laughs> the other thing that they said is absolutely no climbing in the air vents or the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And they said it's because they do all their wiring in mm -hmm. the ceiling. So I am up here. Okay, I feel good about this. 
this one. If it was held accountable, especially because this was a YouTube original production, mm. Zach would have been eliminated for cheating. He broke the rules and guarantee you if I claimed, if I climbed in the ceiling, Mr. Beast would eliminate me. He was in the ceiling! Also, I think some of the Mr. Beast giveaways have been fake, uh, but I'll get to that later. So now that I've explained some of the ways that Mr. Beast lies to build trust with his audience, I want to go on to explain how he exploits that trust for profit through running illegal lotteries, selling fake signatures, giving children diabetes, and more. A call to action is simply when you tell the viewer to do something, saying subscribe is a call to action. Early in his career, Mr. Beast found a better version of this where he takes a call to action and he adds positive or negative reinforcement to it. Now, as adults, we can recognize that subscribe for a cookie is a joke. Uh, it's not a real offer, but again, Mr. Beast's audience is primarily children who may have authorities in their life that actually use sweet treats or video game detentions as forms of reinforcement. And you aren't born understanding sarcasm. Whatever the reason, these reinforced call to actions are more effective than just saying subscribe. Oh, but there's an even much better version the call to action giveaway. If you guys want to win a brand new PS5, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel. I can't believe people are still doing fucking giveaways. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, it's so annoying. Stop this fucking shit. I'm so tired of it. Fucking 10 years of YouTube, people are still like buying subs for this shit. So over the next seven days, I'm gonna be giving a thousand random people that subscribe a free Samsung Galaxy S24. How is this legal? I don't get it. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel. All you have to do to enter to win one of these phones is subscribe. It's a scam. Holy shit. I literally spent over a million dollars on these phones. And we literally found him one minute before Zach. I spent over a million dollars on these phones. All you have to do to enter is hit that subscribe button. Samsung, I just want you to love me. So yeah, that's what a call to action giveaway is. At best, they are a way to buy subscribers, but much of the time they are legitimate scams. Either a YouTuber doesn't actually give away a prize, or in the case of these live streams, they are illegal lotteries where the only way to win a prize is by making a purchase. And obviously I'm not a lawyer, so I'm just gonna show you the law and then show you irrefutable evidence of what's being done and you can make your own conclusions. The FTC defines a lottery as containing three elements, a valuable prize, random chance, and consideration, which can be time or effort, but in most cases is just payment. To successfully run a contest or a sweepstakes, you must eliminate one of these factors. A contest, for example, eliminates chance, and a sweepstakes eliminates consideration. In determining if any Mr. Beast giveaways have been illegal lotteries, we need to identify a prize, which is distributed through random chance and cannot be won without spending money. On August 2nd, 2020, Mr. Beast livestreamed him and his friends signing limited edition shirts celebrating 40 million subscribers. Uh, and here are just some of the clips from that stream. For, for those of you who are just joining, if you buy one of our limited edition uh, 40 mil special shirts, we're celebrating 40 million subscribers with a really big video, then we will sign that shirt and some of them will get random prizes like this. In 10 minutes, right, because we gotta give them time to, to do their cart, we'll give Two orders, $500 each. Five minutes, someone's getting three grand in their Someone, order. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Two minutes, newest order, gets $2,000. Good luck, everybody. So this was a six hour live stream. Uh, they took it down off YouTube, but five hours of it are still up on their Facebook page. Uh, and during those five hours, I counted 46 illegal lotteries. These lotteries are also run poorly multiple times. They would say something like, buy in the next five minutes for a chance to win. And then seven minutes later go, actually, the newest order in 30 seconds is gonna win. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Hey, Daryl, don't we owe someone $1,000? We do. Yeah, so, all right, so the newest order in 30 seconds, we are gonna put $1,000 in your package. Steven, uh, Steven K. Okay. Oh. Steve, Steve, and there is no second giveaway 30 seconds later, like Jimmy said. Uh, this is just one very shady giveaway. Uh, they just go on to talk about how Steven made a profit. Steven's a handsome man. We're proud of you, Steven. I counted 13 of these extra shady lotteries where they did not give the prize in the original time frame that they said. Okay, so we're gonna put two iPhones in this pinata and we're gonna give it to someone who orders a shirt in three minutes. Five minutes. Buy a limited edition shirt or hoodie, and we're gonna pick a random one in 10 minutes and give them $2,000. Have we done iPhones yet? 
Yep. Oh, we did Let's one. IPhone. Oh wait, hey yeah. Daryl, first action, before we do that, we never picked a pinata. So these clearly fit the definition of an illegal lottery. These clips are also not out of context. No one ever said no purchase necessary. There's nothing in the description or on the website. At one point, Mr. Beast is informed that they ran out of PlayStations and he says, are we trying to not sell merch? Uh, our city is sold out of PlayStations. We don't have any. We have to give away. <laughs> are we trying to not sell merch? <laughs> So he clearly knows that they're making more money by running these illegal lotteries. Another shady thing he did was constantly suggest that they're doing too many giveaways to make a profit. My guy over there doing the numbers is like, stop, stop please. Like, you do realize every time you give away an Xbox at a thousand dollars, you don't make money. I'm like, oh, I know we're not gonna make money. What are we doing guys? We're gonna check after this stream and it's gonna be like, like, oh no. What a waste. Yeah, I know. We're gonna break neutral. When there was just no way they were ever even close to losing money on this stream. I don't know who this is, but you just got a pair of AirPods. Oh my gosh, we're not making money. Guys, <laughs> we need to stop giving everyone something. We've just like, lost like seven. Almost grand. everything, almost everything that someone's bought, we put something in their package. I'm not gonna make so money. You in five hours, they gave away about $50,000 worth of stuff uh, and sold over 50,000 t-shirts. Selling these t-shirts at $42 each, profit margin would be about $22. But even if they were making like $1 per shirt, they would still be fine. Uh, also, by my estimates, only one in every 1,600 orders actually won a prize. And I guarantee he has real-time analytics on his laptop. He knows they make more money every time he says, Oh my god, guys, we're giving away so much stuff. We're not even going to make a profit. Please, don't you want me to make a profit? That's why he keeps saying it. Also, they just don't show how winners are picked. So it's probably not actually random. You know, humans have biases. Imagine Jimmy tells the guy off camera, hey, pick a name right now. And he sees two names. One is easy to pronounce, one is not. This is why lotteries are heavily regulated to ensure fairness. Also, obviously you have to be 18 to play the lottery. It's gambling. Mr. Beast isn't just promoting gambling to children here. He's running the casino. And this isn't even close to the worst stream he's done. Four months later, Mr. Beast signed shirts again, but this time it was a 24 hour live stream with way more illegal lotteries. And by the way, the rest of these streams were taken down shortly after upload. So all I have is some old clips and Reddit threads talking about them. Right, now this stream did say, we are doing a ton of giveaways, no purchase necessary in the description. Uh, but to be eligible to win most prizes, you had to make a purchase. So, would, yes. would you guys prefer, would you prefer that we throw money in random orders? Or that we throw items in random order. Yeah. Somebody screamed in chat, I want to switch. Hey. Buy a shirt. In 30 minutes, we are giving away my car to someone that buys merch. Which each giveaway is its own independent event. You can't give one prize to someone who buys something and a different prize to someone in chat. The prize where you have to buy something is still an illegal lottery, which obviously Mr. Beast knows this, but you know, he's a, he's a poker player. He likes a little bluffery, a little plausible deniability you know, pretending to be ignorant of the law. You know, YouTube's a little different than this. Um, yeah. Because YouTube, I can just do stuff like that. I can just be like, you know what? Pull up a database of 100 people that bought chocolate bars and pick 100 random ones. Got it. I think I can do that over here. I don't know. So mm -hmm. I don't want to say anything. And then someone be like, yeah, actually, that's illegal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I could not find any way to enter the big Tesla giveaway without spending at least $42. And we're giving away a Tesla to someone random who bought stuff. They also gave away 24 tickets, which gave you the opportunity to be in a video. Again, most of these tickets, you had to make a purchase to win. One random person that buys in what time frame? 10 minutes. We're gonna put this in someone's order that buys something. And we're gonna have 24 yeah. people, we're gonna put them in 24 different circles. Million dollars on the line, have some fun, you know what I'm saying? Also, this video never happened. There is no Mr. Beast video of 24 people in circles competing for a million dollars. Unless it ended up being 100 people in a circle competing for $500,000, but that's a smaller prize and much worse odds. So like, did they just pocket the money or what? Hey, it's the pilot guy. Wait, he's about to be the first one out? That's unlike him. Even though you got out first, I still have a prize for you. Just wait here. <laughs> oh, first person out gets a car and it just happened to be your friend Mac. Another thing that just annoys me is Jimmy constantly says during these live streams that he's just doing this for fun because he loves giving things away. Oh, and I just like giving away stuff. It's kind of fun to me. Imagine you just lost a bunch of money at the casino and the owner comes out and he says, Guys, 
the reason I do all this, I just love giving away money. Uh, also, you're seven years old in that example. It's insane that he can flip these massively profitable illegal lotteries targeted towards children as a, an act of generosity. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to go place an order at shopmrbeast.com. Anyone watching any of the lives. And um, we're going to throw iPhones in some of them. And again, there are very few videos of this live stream on the internet. I think Mr. Beast probably copyright strikes reuploads. But almost any clip you do find will have some new violation of internet gambling or sweepstakes laws. Well, I, it was, I thought it was him. I was like, you won. <laughs> Wait, really? Let's go. Wait, it's literally like his like, initial. Who is it? My cousin. <laughs> Wait, really? Actually, that's illegal. Some of the common complaints we see in threads about this live stream are that they only signed large t-shirts. So when they selected an order to give a prize, it was apparently always a large or extra large t-shirt. Uh, they kept saying things like buy in the next 15 minutes for a chance to win and then not honoring it. Multiple people claiming that their name was read to win a prize and they never received it. This person is still tweeting about it to this day. Now there's a lot more people complaining about the deceptive sales tactics. Reading all this really upsets me because I spent money I honestly didn't have for five shirts at different times during the live when they said things like buy now and you will get prize or money. And I received two orders and nothing but shirt, both with MB and one with a heart and one with a smiley. I was hoping for at least a couple things for Christmas for my family. Now this commenter also goes on to explain that she's disabled, has PTSD. Lotteries and scams specifically target vulnerable populations like that. I'm disappointed. My son bought a signed shirt and was so excited. He watched a live stream and saw that people who bought would receive $100. He was excited to win something and be a part of his favorite streamer, Mr. Beast. When the shirt arrived, he was grinning from ear to ear. When he realized that there was no $100, he was visibly disappointed. He said nothing other than, I guess he meant everyone except me. He loves his shirt, but I'm really upset seeing him hurt. And obviously people can lie on the internet, but a lot of people are independently claiming the same things. Like that at the end of the live stream, they said they were putting $100 in every order. Now, my speculation is that they put $100 in every order that came across the table that they signed, but I'd be interested to see how they worded that. If the video of this live stream ever resurfaces, I, I think a lot of these claims will be proven true, uh, which Mr. Beast definitely has this stream saved. He saves all his footage. Uh, so I'll ask you, Jimmy, will you publish this to prove your innocence? Also using archive.org, we can see what the website looked like on the day of the stream. And while there's no mention of any sweepstakes whatsoever, uh, it does say this limited T signed by Mr. Beast and crew. Uh, but the description says it's signed by a member of the Mr. Beast crew. And it doesn't say anywhere that other members will sign MB, deceiving people into believing it was signed by Mr. Beast. So here's a clip of Tyler forging, or not, maybe not forging, using Mr. Beast's signature. So Tyler signs MB, which is Mr. B's signature. Then he covers it, signs his own initials, TC, smirks, looks around, and then quickly slides the shirt away. Could you make it any more obvious? You know, you don't accidentally have someone else's signature as muscle memory. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I think this is fraud. Maybe they could say it's the brand's signature. Even though it's clearly implied that this is Jimmy's signature, which was established during the last live stream. Cool. MB, Mr. Beast. So this is Mr. Beast's signature. No way, this one was signed by Mr. Beast. It's just got the MB, but it, that means it's signed by Mr. Beast. That's obviously his, Mr. Beast. This is so cool. That's obviously his, Mr. Beast. You know, some people bought these shirts as collector's items or even investments, and this puts into question the authenticity of all Mr. Beast signed merch, which otherwise could have been very valuable one day. This was clearly muscle memory, and judging by his body language, he knew he exposed this. Even Tariq notices Tyler slip up and immediately looks into the camera, looks guilty, and then readjusts his body and rubs his hands together. Also, Mr. Beast said during the live stream that this is the last time he'd ever sign anything, and that was just a lie. Illegal lotteries targeted towards children and selling fake signatures. I mean, imagine if any other YouTuber was caught doing this. You're oh, very the guy smart who with just your money. Throws away millions of dollars on YouTube videos as a gambler. Who would have thought? <laughs> By this point, Mr. Beast noticed a problem with these CTA giveaways. I mean, obviously they're illegal, but more importantly, they're not as profitable as they could be. Look at it like this: there are two value propositions at play here: the perceived value of the product and the perceived value of the chance to win a prize. 
So for something like these $42 t-shirts, if the viewer values the chance to be in a video at $10, they need to value the t-shirt at an additional $32 to make the purchase. So the more expensive the product, the less effective the lottery is. You wanna get the product as close to $0 as possible, so people are just paying for the perceived value of the lottery. That's what's most profitable because humans can't accurately comprehend the difference between one in a million odds versus one in a billion odds. They both kind of just compute as, I have a small chance to win. Uh, which Mr. Beast is well aware of this flaw in human mental arithmetic. At past a certain point, the average human is like, large sum of money, click. And like, right. larger sum of money doesn't really impact the viewing experience. So also the larger your audience is, the more profitable a lottery will be. Anyway, Mr. Beast wanted the cheapest product possible to use for these CTA giveaways. Basically a piece of paper, but you obviously couldn't sell a piece of paper without getting backlash. So in January 2021, three months after the last shirt signing stream, Mr. Beast did a live stream where for only $10, viewers could send a picture to the moon. Wait, JPEGs that are going to the moon? And of course he did more illegal lotteries. Uh, just to keep things fun and interesting, as if putting a photo on the moon. It's an interesting enough. Someone who puts a photo on the moon, or, or if you buy the bundle, whatever, and the next 30 minutes, we'll just fly you down to be in a video. Three years later, the spaceship finally launched, carrying beautiful pictures of deceased loved ones to the moon where they would be immortalized. It fucking exploded. So obviously Mr. Beast refunded everyone, right? Right? Is it Mr. Beast's fault that the rocket exploded? No. Is it his fault that he advertised it as for $10, I will put your photo on the moon? For $10, I'll put whatever picture you want on the moon. When he couldn't guarantee that? Yes, of course. October 16th, 2021, same thing. Buy this shirt to be in a video. Shopify dashboard. We just have like a, a random number generator and then like we just put the na number, like if there's a thousand orders, we just put it, picks the number between one and thousand, and then my people give me the name. So the first person that we're inviting to be in our Squid Game, if you want to enter, click the link in the description, buy the shirt or hoodie, is Alonzo Diaz. <laughs> or this is an actual hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Wait, really? Like they actually sent a hundred dollar bill. Wait, what does what? it say? Oh, now we have to read the message. You and your crew are an inspiration to our young ones. He wanted to send you a hundred dollars. Uh, everyone click the link or the view product thing in the bottom left. Um, what We're going to open three packages and whatever's in those three packages, we're going to give someone random that buys. Mr. Beast is the American dream. Now I'm going to get to what, in my opinion, is the most unethical CTA giveaway that Mr. Beast has done. But before I do that, I really want to drive home the point that the closer a sweepstakes is to an illegal lottery, the more money it makes. Because you know, every customer is supposed to be informed that they can enter easily for free and that making a purchase does not increase their chances of winning. Like you're supposed to say no purchase necessary in all of your promotional material, which Mr. Beast does not do. This legal gray area only leads to people getting scammed, especially the elderly and children uh, who are also being introduced to gambling. The only people who benefit off of sweepstakes are influencers and scammers. Remember Wizza, a sweepstakes company that got exposed as a total scam and shut down? Even Omaze, the charity sweepstakes company, got exposed as a scam and had to shut down in the US? Or back in the day, there was Mystery Brand. You remember Mystery Brand? So Mystery Brand is a website where you purchase different boxes with chances of winning things. Take, for example, this women's Christmas box. It costs $15 to open, and you can win the most expensive Los Angeles realty. But you can't even click it, okay? It doesn't even give you more information, but apparently it's worth $250 million. I love that you can't click it. Like, they're just like, trust us. There's a $250 million house with your name on it. All the way down to Icicle, site balance. I'm willing to bet that this is probably what 99% of the people are getting. Hey, at least Mr. Beast never wanted to work with this obvious scam. I mean, at least Mr. Beast's manager never went on some podcast and talked about how Mr. Beast really wanted to work with this company. No, what's this? Is there anything you've had to say no to? Um, yeah, tons. Uh, yeah, so a uh, good example. 
So it was about three years or two and a half years ago when I started working with Jimmy, what was becoming really popular were these like mystery loot crate, like internet mm -hmm. sites where you, it's basically like CSGO skins, but you'd go on and be like, here's the Supreme box and you'd pay $50 for oh, it. And remember it was yeah, like- Yeah, didn't Rice Rice Gum did uh, yeah, quite a few Paul. people. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they got a lot of hate for that. Right. Jimmy was, um, he wanted to work with that company when he heard about it because it was a lot of money and we wanted to give that money away in a video and I, I had to talk him back on it. I was like, listen, we're not- promoting gambling. I think people are going to see this negatively. So it's yeah. a long conversation that him and I had to have, which eventually we passed on the deal. And then Jake, Paul and Rice Gum ended up doing that deal and got a lot of hate for it. Uh, Jimmy, why is your manager saying that you wanted to promote this obvious scam to your young impressionable audience? Mr. Beast launched Feastables, his new chocolate brand, back in January 2022. I want to tell you guys about my new snack company, Feastables. They're made with only five ingredients, but still taste amazing. And I'm kicking off Feastables with something I've always wanted to do. Ten random bars are going to have a mystery ticket inside of them, and if you get this mystery ticket, we will fly you out to compete for a chocolate factory in one of our videos. And on top of that, Chandler, we're giving away over a million dollars in other prizes to random people that buy the bars. Dude, I need to buy these. It's interesting to look back at this because a large part of Feastables' marketing campaign was the fact that it's a better for you brand, that it's healthier for you than Hershey's. Less sugar, only four ingredients, all organic. I wanted to just make a better for you snack brand because I think a lot of the stuff out there is just terrible for you. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. Like Hershey's, for example, there's 10 ingredients, super processed. Our, our Fusils bars are five ingredients and just all the ingredients are way higher quality. And it's infinitely better than the other options out there. I got all the Feastable chocolates. Let's try them and rank them one to six. I'm gonna be completely honest, totally not biased because if it sells more, I make more money. I'm gonna be honest. And I hope Jimmy is sitting next to me and not getting his feelings hurt. <laughs> Compare it to Hershey's. It's our crunch bar. Okay. This is the one you believe in? Yes. It's not crazy, Jamie. No? no? You don't like crunch bars? I do like crunch bars, but again, it's too sweet. Let me try this. Maybe these are defective. Oh I my like God, it. this tastes good to me. Wait, we supposed to be ranking them. I rated the first one. So we going completely off of oh, well, We're going completely off of We're in too deep. I rate this a 10 out of 10. I give this an 11 out of 10. Keep in mind, only five ingredients. Infinitely healthier for you than the normal thing out there. Also my favorite so far. Okay, here's the thing. I didn't realize you were a dark chocolate guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not a super dark chocolate guy. I do love dark chocolate. I get it so 7.8 out of 10. Okay, so I'm starting to understand this, yeah, man. Okay, okay. okay. I'm starting to figure this man out. You're gonna like this one, right? You like salt? You, I, I really love salt. Sea salt guy. I just, I'm gonna get rid of these. I love salt. No, no you, I want the no, chocolate. You no, know, you just don't, you, trust me. You you like, you're a dark one? chocolate kind of guy. Yes, okay. if, I, I can read the room. The room is red. Now in 2024, Mr. Beast changed the formula again to where it has mostly the same ingredients as Hershey's and even more sugar and more calories per bar. And this initial ad for Feastables where he calls it healthy is still getting millions of views a month. Also, I don't think you should ever advertise it as over a million dollars in prizes when more than a third of those prizes are just coupons for more Mr. Beast products, forcing you to spend more money if you actually want to redeem them. Ooh, a $5 coupon for Beast Burger. Now a single combo only costs $20. Bob's Burgers Palace or fucking Five Guys. If this shit can be successful, five fucking guys. Five Guys. It's so good. Who cares? It's called Five Guys. What kind of fucking name is that? It doesn't matter. Uh, it the does. burgers are good. Branding matters. Ooh, maybe you should have spent a little less time on this uh, beautiful logo and more time on making the food actually edible. Ugh. Brother, ugh. What's that? What's that, brother? Also, be for real, dude. Uh, Five Guys has a nice, clean, appealing aesthetic. You know, the name suggests humble beginnings. This is like a eight-year-old sloppy cotton candy piss burger. It literally looks like a piss burger. Also, this digital wheel is not remotely representative of your actual odds. Mark Rober has talked about this common deceptive casino tactic before. You recall from the carnival scam video, the most lucrative games for the carnival owner are those where people overestimate their chances of winning. That is exactly what happens in this game. Thinking you were so close to getting a jackpot, when in reality, you weren't close at all. In gambling psychology, this is known as the near miss effect, and people will spend much more money to try and win because they think they can just do it on the next one. So I am absolutely pigging out on Feastables, um, and I'm trying to do this. Mr. Beast is teaching us gambling? 
Minus points because there's no cool music. Anyway, uh, let's gamble. Also, these tickets, one of them just so happened to go to a YouTuber with 700,000 subscribers at the time. Just pure chance. This was just taped. It was taped. <gasps> no freaking way. So it is like really t like total chance, obviously. Like you're one of like hundreds of thousands of names. Talk to Jimmy Bell. What do you got to say then? Jimmy, say thank then. you for picking us. No, he didn't. It was random. I know. Uh, was it though? Was it random? Also, this guy went on to win the chocolate factory and extremely unlikely things do happen, but uh, can we see how the winners were chosen maybe? Because knowing how important it is to Jimmy that every video has entertaining contestants through the whole video, it's a little suspicious. I, I'll just say, in my opinion, as somebody who worked for Mr. Beast, I don't think this large YouTuber won a ticket purely by chance. Also, I know that producers are sort of able to pull strings behind the scenes to give some contestants better chances than others. And he runs these sweepstakes to like bribe children with gambling to consume more sugar. Like this is far worse than a lottery ticket because a lottery ticket doesn't give you diabetes and only pay out your rich and famous friends. Like Mr. Beast is bringing hundreds of thousands, if not millions of new people to the candy aisle, whether he wants to admit it or not. People are just walking to the chocolate aisle and instead of buying Hershey's, buying Feastables. Like, you, people who never would have bought chocolate in Walmart are walking mm. to the chocolate aisle specifically to buy Feastables. You're creating so, a new market. Exactly. Yeah. I'm bringing new customers yeah. to the aisle. Okay, I guess he does want to admit it. Uh, you know, kind of a weird flex, not something I would brag about, Jimmy. Also, maybe I should mention technically I'm a certified nutritionist, which really just means I paid $1,200 for a course and then failed to launch a health food company. But I know that poor diet and especially excessive sugar consumption is the number one cause of death and health problems in America, including some of the health problems that Mr. Beast claims to care so much about. Blindness, deafness, loss of limbs. Mr. Beast also just launched a combo with Zaxby's, which if you get a soda, it's over 2,000 calories for one meal. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. The only thing real in this video is the new Mr. Beast box at Zaxby's. I'm pretty sure this would be illegal in Europe. This is like more calories in one meal than the average 10 year old is supposed to consume on a daily basis. Tell me how I'm killing little kids. Right. New research finds childhood obesity rates are getting worse. The number one killer in America is obesity. The number of deaths in overweight people surpass alcohol and smoking altogether. For 30 days straight, we are going to be giving away $10,000 to a lucky customer who scans the QR code on the back of any new Feastable bar. It's just disappointing to see somebody pretend to care about the health epidemic in the US only when it's profitable for them. I know this point isn't gonna resonate with a lot of people because of how normalized high calorie and high sugar diets are in America, but like bribing children to get into the habit of consuming excessive amounts of sugar, like $10,000 a day as a giveaway is very deliberate because it's trying to create repeat customers that just buy out of habits. Like doing this, especially when you clearly understand how much of a health risk it is to these kids. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. It, it's honestly just fucking evil to me. And I pushed back against this a lot while I worked at the company. For Halloween this year, Feastables is planning on putting a million dollars in a chocolate bar. And they wanted to do a bunch of like scummy marketing and shit. My manager literally said at one point that they wanted to associate buying a Feastables with your dream coming true. So they're pitching ideas like, you know, buy a Feastables, win 10K, uh, buy a Feastables out of a vending machine and the vending machine just starts spitting out money, buy a Feastables and it has a ticket to Disney World, whatever, right? And I don't wanna put a lot of like hearsay into this video. You should just believe the receipts that I'm showing you and not what I'm saying. But I swear to God, I said to somebody at the company, I feel like Feastables is 70% a chocolate company and 30% a lottery targeted targeting children. And this higher up person at Mr. Beast said it was probably closer to the other way around and was laughing about it. Like 70% a lottery, 30% a chocolate company. Everyone knows it's just the call to actions and call to action giveaways especially that drive sales. As soon as they stop, it's hard for large bargain retailers to sell this shit for 70% off. That's why they push them so hard. Once they stop the diabetes lottery, no one buys. Also, this is the website right now. Mr. Beast wants you to join the crew. Just so weird and scummy to me. I believe all the Feastables giveaways do have official rules and no purchase necessary clauses somewhere, but it's very difficult to find them. In traditional media, if you advertise a sweepstakes like in a commercial, you have to say in the promotional material itself, no purchase necessary. 
Somehow Mr. Beast gets away with not saying no purchase necessary in any of his promotional materials, not the videos, the descriptions, pinned comments, nothing. To celebrate our launch of milk, chocolate, and sea salt, we went out, we bought 10 Teslas, loads of cash, and all these prizes you see on the screen. And prizes aside, unlike Hershey's, these bars only have four to five ingredients and just genuinely taste good. Go to peacewolves.com right now and order some chocolate. Only problem is the chocolate river is deteriorating all the cake. The only place you'll find no purchase necessary is either on the Feastables Twitter account because it's a rule of the platform and even still they try to push it. No perch neck or hidden deep in the Feastables website under a FAQ. And to enter for free, you have to mail in separate three inch by five inch hand addressed written index cards up to 10 a day. Do you think kids are gonna do that shit or just beg their parents when they're at Walmart for the YouTuber diabetes lottery ticket? How is this legal? How do you mail something without making a purchase? Cards, envelopes, stamps. The free entry method can cost more than the chocolate bar itself. Also, going back to sweepstakes law for a second, payment isn't the only form of consideration. Consideration can also be time or effort that directly benefits Mr. Beast in some way. Like, I don't know, if he told his fans to clean up and organize his Feastables displays in Walmart for a chance to win $5,000. Shelfie cleanup and $5,000 drawing? They thought this was going to be a monthly thing, uh, but it got a lot of controversy, obviously. How can I successfully clean up the shelves? Wow, glad you asked. No bars on the shelf? Go find an employee and ask them to check to see if there is product in the back room and ask them to bring them out so you can put it on the shelf to match the tags. What the f dude? Imagine a seven-year-old looking for the Walmart manager so he can ask to stock shelves for a chance to be compensated? Dude, was Walmart in on this? This was not just one off-the-cuff tweet. This was like planned with instructions and graphics and everything. Also, a company asking children for selfies is a little bit weird. And while you're at it, if you wanna maybe move some Hershey's bars and make sure that Feastables has plenty of space, I wouldn't complain. Wah! I just cannot believe they were gonna give $5,000 to one of Mr. Beast's child laborers for stocking shelves. And no one at Mr. Beast was like, hey, this is a terrible idea. Uh, actually, if you said that, you'd probably get fired. This is the best tasting chocolate on earth. Good job, boys. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do we know that's the best tasting chocolate in the world? You're fired. What? This is such horse shit. You can do that? I mean, that is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. The most shocking result was that Feastables never earned anything higher than a third place ranking. But I do think their branding is like world's best chocolate bar is, um, how do, you, how do you get away with that? World's best chocolate. World's best pizza. What does that even, what does that even, what does that even you mean? De define that yourself. Yeah, I mean, I guess. But I would think you'd have to, I don't know. I, I'm i sure whoever worked on his marketing gave some thought to it or something. Okay, one last point on consideration. Prolonged attention is definitely a form of consideration. In the attention economy, it is the valuable resource that advertisers directly pay Mr. Beast for. So in these live streams when Mr. Beast says, hey guys, today we're doing a bunch of illegal lotteries, but also we're gonna be giving away some free stuff to people who keep watching. He does that to boost viewer numbers. I'm gonna give you guys a reason to keep watching, okay? Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, randomly, I'm not gonna tell you when, it could be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour. I'm gonna randomly pick one person watching this IG live stream and one person watching this YouTube live stream. I'm gonna give you each $5,000. So, Brilliant. keep watching. There's no predictable intervals for when Mr. Beast will give things away for free to people who watch. So you have to be present when they happen, which means viewers have to keep watching, which is time and effort that directly benefits Mr. Beast. The more viewers, the more money Mr. Beast obviously makes, either directly through sales or AdSense or just getting boosted in the YouTube algorithm. So even the free giveaways could and should be against the law. Mr. Beast just uses gambling psychology to exploit young children for profit. He's just become the first casino where the currency you pay with is attention. Do you think attention is the most valuable currency in the world? Well, of course. Uh, or labor or 
money sometimes. Yeah, his core audience is like, I'd say like 10 to 12 year old mm. boys. Older people are a little bit over him. Some people kind of question the ethics, you know, they sometimes say in these videos where he like builds all these wells or, you know, cures people of this blindness. It's almost like he's exploiting people for these views. So older audiences don't love him, but this tween audience, they love him. And they're thinking, you know, watching him could get me a car. So why wouldn't I? <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys a reason to keep watching. Okay, now as far as fake giveaways go, I'm sort of limited in what I can say without exposing confidential information and getting sued. So my official statement is that sometimes things slip through the cracks and personally, I believe that is intentional. Here's one example where someone on Reddit posted saying that they were promised free dog food for life in exchange for letting Mr. Beast use them in a video. Five months later, they still haven't received their dog food. I actually sent this post to someone who works at Mr. Beast and they said they were gonna send it to the PR team and then the Reddit post got taken down. So I don't know if it got resolved. Here's another example of things slipping through the cracks. The second thing that I probably would do different is invest. And I know what y'all about to say, Y'all about to go to the clip to where Jimmy said that we set a certain amount aside to invest. I know you talked about wanting to maybe invest 50K and then set aside like the other 23 for just other little nuances yes. here and there. This is not me calling anybody a liar or anything because I know what I know what y'all do. I know what the internet does. But what I think what happened was somebody that worked for Mr. Beast or something like that was also probably help me invest. But that didn't happen. I talked to Jimmy uh, when I, after I won a million dollars, after I finally like got the remaining amount in my bank account i was telling him i was like man i don't want to fail i don't want to be like how everybody's saying like i'm gonna run out of money and do all this crazy stuff i was like man jimmy please help me and he said he was gonna help me and trying to and we was gonna invest but yeah that didn't happen so I, if you actually watch this video you know mr beast does say that they're not going to be irresponsible that they're going to try to set mark up for life and that they are going to help him with investing what we're actually going to do is be responsible and try to set mark up for his future so we're going to make smart purchases like a house cars and do some investing. But according to Mark, Mr. Beast only gave him an hour to plan what house to buy and then gave him only 24 hours to spend the bulk of his money for a video. Time. I wish I would have had more time and I wish I would have planned out stuff better. Like that was the, the best, best example I can give you is when uh, we had planned out the house and stuff. I literally have had an hour. He, he had somebody come to my house and we sat down and we planned all this in an hour. Yeah, they came to my house and we planned this out and yeah, in about an hour. So I wish I would have had more time and I wish I would have did a couple of things differently on the time management side, which I guess I really couldn't help because I had to spend it. I had to spend the money and I had to like do all this. So I'm starting to think you might've been a little bit better off if you didn't make him spend a million dollars in 24 hours for content. Can I just say, I'm super glad you won the million dollars. All I need from you is a signature right here. The vehicles are yours. What we're actually gonna do is be responsible and try to set Mark up for his future. You better not read it, you're a millionaire, you get time to read. <laughs> the you. more you show us around, the more I'm like, thank God you won the million dollars. You're selling Krabby Patties, eh, Plankton? That's right, Squidward. And there's a free bucket helmet with every purchase. Careful one. No! You may have hoodwinked everyone else in this backwater town, but you can't fool me. I listen to public radio. What's that supposed to mean? It means you set up Mr. Krabs. You stole the crown so Neptune would freeze him and you could finally get your stubby little paws on the Krabby Patty formula. It was you all along. But you made one fatal mistake. You messed with my paycheck. And I'm gonna report you to the highest authority in the land, King Neptune. We'll see about that, Inspector Loose Lips. <laughs> now activating helmet brain control devices. What? What's going on here? Seize him, slaves! All hail Plankton! Ah! Ah! Get down here! Ah! 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 All hail Plankton! All hail Plankton! Who can stop me now?
Now be like shocked, like have your hands over your face, like you're as emotional as you can be. So like have your hand reaching for it and then like be like shocked, like you're, yeah. Now act a little surprised. Like, be like really shot with your mouth open. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, congratulations. Uh, so you can clearly see the evidence in this video. It was really bad. Uh, Mr. Beast, he uses actors, he uses paid friends and family members to get into his videos. Your chance to get into a Mr. Beast video is like one of a quadrillion. Like, it's very, very slim and you're probably not going to be able to, to, to make it or do it because, like I said, he hires people that he knows. If you don't know him, you're not going to get help. Uh, he also manipulates a lot of his clips, a lot of fake things going on. He rigs it. He puts scripts. He does things that are very illegal because YouTube will kind of let him get away with it. But the main way to give this guy a lesson is the kryptonite to Mr. Beast is his subscriber count. If we can reduce that by a significant amount, he would be very hurt and YouTube would take notice and take action. But unless that happens, nothing really is going to get done. The same thing with Sniper Wolf, remember? Her subscriber count took a massive dip and then YouTube stepped in, gave her punishments. And then she stopped doing that for a little bit and then she went right back to it, you know? And then YouTube obviously need to keep checking their big creators and keep them in check, you know, because they're obviously trying to bend the rules and the law. Anyway, thank you for following this. If you are new, subscribe, of course. It's free to do so. It takes you a second. And I do try to provide some content that's a little bit different than the rest. Uh, but hopefully this full video helped you analyze and break down everything in your mind to make a good decision to what you and your kids are watching. You know, it's a crazy place on YouTube, and uh, the biggest YouTuber isn't clean. Uh, <laughs> that's a huge problem. See ya.